Hello and welcome to Linguisticator. I'm Aaron Ralby, and in this video, we're going to start going through the first book of Harry Potter in French, parsing and translating everything as we go. This is the first in a series of videos, parsing the first few pages of the book. In this video, we'll get through the first paragraph, and over the next several videos, we'll get through the first few pages of chapter one. We're going to take our time in this first video and go through the text really closely, then we'll speed up in subsequent videos. Before we dive in, I just need to say that while I speak French, I am not a native speaker, so I apologize for any errors in pronunciation. These videos are designed to help you understand how the language functions and to get working within a real example of a text in French by using something that is hopefully already familiar. I'll put links in the description below to where you can get copies of both the book and audiobook in French. Okay, let's get started. C'est parti! First of all, the title of the first book in French is Harry Potter à l'école des sorciers. This literally means Harry Potter at the school of the sorcerers. So the title in French is not Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, nor is it Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. À l'école, at the school, de. This is a combination of the preposition de, meaning of, and the plural definite article les, meaning the. Sorcier, of course, means sorcerers. Harry Potter à l'école des sorciers. Harry Potter at the school of the sorcerers. Chapitre 1. Le survivant. Chapter 1. The survivor. The word survivant comes from the verb survivre, meaning to survive. It is a nominalization of the present participle. This translates the English title, the boy who lived. In French, it's the survivor. Okay. Let's start going through the text of the first paragraph. I'm going to read it all the way through in French, and then we'll break it down in detail. Monsieur et Madame Dursley, qui habitaient au 4 Prévet Drive, avaient toujours affirmé avec la plus grande fierté qu'ils étaient parfaitement normaux. Merci pour eux. Jamais quiconque n'aurait imaginé qu'ils puissent se trouver impliqués dans quoi que ce soit d'étrange ou de mystérieux. Ils n'avaient pas de temps à perdre avec des sonnettes. Monsieur et Madame Dursley, well, that's pretty straightforward. Mr. and Mrs. Dursley. A means and. Qui habitait au 4 Privet Drive. Who lived at number 4 Privet Drive. Qui is who, the relative pronoun referring to the Dursleys. Habité is the third person plural imperfect of the verb habiter, meaning to live or reside. O is a combination of the preposition a and the masculine definite article le together meaning something like at the, literally. Since O begins with a vowel, we end up with liaison and have to pronounce the T on the end of habiter. Habiter to. We then have quatre, number four, and privet drive, the name of the street. Privet is the name of a type of hedge in English, and it gets translated directly into French as the same word. Qui habitait au quatre, privet drive who lived at number four, Privet Drive. Avait toujours affirmé. Had always affirmed. This is an example of the past perfect, or plus que parfait. We have avait, the third person plural imperfect form of avoir, meaning had. Toujours, always. Affirmé, affirmed. Avait toujours affirmé. Had always affirmed. Avec la plus grande fierté with the greatest pride. Avec, with, la plus grande, literally the most big. This is an example of the superlative in French, which is created by combining the definite article with plus, meaning more. Here the definite article is feminine because fierté, which means pride, is a feminine noun. Grande is therefore also in the feminine. Avec la plus grande fierté, with the greatest pride. Qu'ils étaient parfaitement normaux. That they were perfectly normal. Que is the relative pronoun that. Il, they. Était, were. Third person plural imperfect of être, to be. Because the verb begins with a vowel, we end up with liaison. So instead of il était, we get ils étaient. Parfaitement. Perfectly. This is the adverb formed out of the adjective parfait. Adverbs in French are created by taking the feminine form of the adjective 
and adding the suffix mon. Parfaitement. Normal. Normal. Notice that this is the masculine plural form of the adjective, agreeing with the pronoun il. The singular form is normal. Qu'ils étaient parfaitement normaux. That they were perfectly normal. Merci pour eux. Thanks for them. This is a bit tricky to explain. It translates the English, thank you very much, which has a kind of ironic flair to it. In French, this means something like, thank you on their behalf, but the meaning can change depending on context. Since the pronoun eux just means them, in another context, this could mean thanks for them, where them is something that you have received. Here, it carries a similar flair to the original, thank you very much, which is emphatic, almost defiant. Merci pour eux. Thank you very much. Jamais quiconque n'aurait imaginé. Never anyone not would have imagined. No one would ever have imagined. Here we have the negative particle ne coupled with the negative time adverbial jamais, meaning never. So we don't need pas as well, since jamais replaces pas. Aurait imaginé is past conditional. Aurait is a third person present conditional form of avoir, to have and imaginer is the past participle of the verb imaginer, to imagine. So, aurait imaginé is would have imagined. Notice that here as well, we get liaison. Jamais quiconque n'aurait imaginé, no one would ever have imagined. Qu'ils puissent se trouver impliqué, that they could find themselves implicated, that they could find themselves involved. Qu'ils, is the contraction of the relative pronoun que and the personal pronoun il, meaning they. Qu'il, that they. Puisse, this is the third person plural present subjunctive form of pouvoir, to be able to. There are a number of words and environments that trigger the subjunctive in French, including expressions of doubt, hope, or preference. In this case, since we have no one ever imagining the Dursleys, this hypothetical and doubtful statement is put into the subjunctive. More specifically, when you negate verbs of thinking or belief, you get the subjunctive. Since we have the negative with imaginer, we use the subjunctive form of pouvoir. Ce is the reflexive pronoun themselves, and trouver means to find. Impliquer is related to implicate in English, but means more generally to involve or to entail. Qu'ils puissent se trouver impliqués. That they could find themselves involved. Dans quoi que ce soit d'étrange ou de mystérieux. In anything strange or mysterious. Dans, in, quoi que ce soit. Literally, what that this may be. Soit is the present subjunctive of the verb être, meaning to be. Something like may be. Taken altogether, what that this may be means anything at all. Quoi que ce soit is a cluster of words commonly used together in French to mean anything or anything at all. D'étrange ou de mystérieux. This literally means of strange or of mysterious. When you have an indefinite pronoun like quoi que ce soit or quelque chose in French and you want to specify it with quality, then you add the preposition de afterwards before stating the adjective in the masculine singular. That's why we have d'étrange ou de mystérieux and not simply étrange ou mystérieux. Donc quoi que ce soit d'étrange ou de mystérieux. In anything strange or mysterious. Il n'avait pas de temps. They didn't have time. Notice that in colloquial speech you do not pronounce the vowel on the end of de but rather lengthen the consonant. Pas de temps. À perdre avec des sornettes. To lose with nonsense. À perdre, to lose. Sornet is a plural noun meaning nonsense. Il n'avait pas de temps à perdre avec des sornettes. They didn't have time to lose with nonsense. Now that we've gone through and translated all of the text of the first paragraph, sit back and listen again to just the French. Monsieur et Madame Dursley, qui habitaient au 4 Privet Drive, avaient toujours affirmé avec la plus grande fierté qu'ils étaient parfaitement normaux. Merci pour eux. 
Jamais quiconque n'aurait imaginé qu'il puisse se trouver impliqué dans quoi que ce soit d'étrange ou de mystérieux. Il n'avait pas de temps à perdre avec des sornettes. You may need to watch this video a few times before everything really soaks in. As we continue through the text in subsequent videos, however, it will get faster and easier. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and share it and leave a comment below if you'd like to see more of this kind of content. Please also check out linguisticator.com for our full course in French and our course in memory that will teach you how to build memory palaces to learn foreign languages. Merci et à la prochaine.